or give it a go, but I could completely blow my doors off. He's right in his element here. Three cameras surrounding him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe, you never had so many cameras on I know, I know. 50k run to lower stock, honk for support. <laughs> yeah. It's the first time I've written on anything for absolutely ages. You're at school. Yeah, you're at school, <laughs> mate. <laughs> As I got older, I always wanted to run from Norwich to lower stock just to see if it was possible, whether or not I could do it, I, you know, because it was obviously about 50k if you go the uh, back roads rather than the main roads. Here you go. When should that be finished by? Well, when, as soon as we can get it delivered from America, basically. Oh shit, really? But if you get enough rain, Joe, you can probably just swim in it anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be swimming in it enough. That'd be good running out having an endless pool out there so you can go swimming. Dreaming. Smash that espresso. Do you do much running over Christmas? Do you go out on like, Christmas Day and stuff? Or you yeah, yeah, I went out on Christmas Day. Better never <laughs> stops, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I went on Christmas Day. Uh, we met Laura's parents in Wells, and I ended up having to like I, I bike there for that. That was oh, quite really? good. Yeah, it was like it was quite a nice day. I mean, it's cold, no cars on the road or anything. Oh, that was lovely. Originally, when I was younger, I used to go to school in Norwich, and I used to get the train from Lower Stoff to Norwich, and it was about 25 miles on the train, and then we used to have to walk from the train station to school, which was about another mile. And uh, as I got older, when I got to about 13 or 14. Sometimes in the summer, my dad would start off bringing the bike over to Norwich uh, in the car, and then I would uh, cycle back and follow him. Like he'd go a little bit further up the road, and uh, he'd kind of show me the way. And I'd bike the uh, 26, 27 miles back from Norwich to Lowestoft. All right, guys. So we're in Lowestoft for a Christmas run, um, festive uh, challenge. So we're going to run today from Lowestoft to, oh, sorry, from Norwich to Lowestoft. Getting ahead of myself there, and I've uh, recruited some proper athletes today for this. <laughs> Got in, got a famous YouTuber, Harry Palmer here, <laughs> and Callum. So uh, yeah, Harry's going to join me for, what are you thinking, like 20k, something yeah, like 25k? 20, 20, 25k at the start, and then hopefully 10k at the end. When I'm like flagging at the end, yeah, he's going to yeah. pull me along, and then Callum was going to do a tempo run anyway, so he's going to join us for the first 10 to 15k or something like that, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Basically, he's got his dad driving, so when, he, when his legs give up or he's had enough, <laughs> then uh, he's getting a lift back to Norwich. And then we've got Techno. DJ's got the speaker with him on the bike, <laughs> so we've got some nice tunes playing. He's going to be um, setting the pace for us and um, giving us like drink bottles, nutrition, everything like that. Um, yeah, training-wise for this, like we haven't really, well, I haven't really done anything different. I don't think you have because you just got roped. I roped him into yeah, it last minute. Yeah, like a couple so, of weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> he's been roped into it, and uh, we're, we're, it's a bit of a step into the unknown. Really, we don't really know how hard it's going to be. Like I, I want to try and do three hours, so I'm going to put it out there at the start. So I'd love to go 2:59. And any stops, if I need to go for a break or anything, the watch is going to carry on going. So any stops is all added into the normal time. And um, I don't know if I'm going to blow up. Um, I've never run over. I did one run of 37k before this um, while I was out in Malaga. But other than that, I've never run over 32, 33k in training. So I don't, and certainly not anywhere near the pace that I need to for this. Like we need to average 336 per k for 50k, which is three hours. So it's uh, going to be a big challenge, but. We're, we're up for taking it on and seeing how it goes. Regarding training for this, I didn't really do anything specific for it. I did a long run in Malaga, which was with Tom. When I said to mention to him about I might be doing this, he kind of planned a 37K run, which was actually the longest run I've ever done in training um, before. Like, I mean, obviously I've run uh, a marathon in an Ironman, but I'd never run over really 32 kilometers in training. So did a 37K run in Malaga. And I thought well, that wasn't too bad, you know, uh, and that was obviously over a massive mountain. So I thought, well, if I was doing 50k, then I think I'd be I'd be all right. Obviously, the main thing was trying to run 50k in three hours, which was like 336k pace that I'd need to hold 
that was kind of a bit of an unknown because I was like, I don't even know if I can do it. I'll I'll give it a go, but I could completely blow my doors off and I could be walking at the end. You and then you can get out. Cause you, you can yeah, no, just hand. let us know when you need it and I'll just hand it to you. Yeah. How warm's your jacket? Because I've got a really warm one. I've got this one underneath. Have you? All right. I can get my heart rate on there. Might as well see, get the data from it, might not. Didn't really do anything too specific. I did a 20K run where I run at 330K pace just to see how it felt and that felt pretty comfortable. So I was kind of like, well, I know 20K at a faster pace is easy, but then it should be easy because I kind of thought to myself it wouldn't be getting hard in the actual thing until 30Ks in. So it didn't really tell me too much, but you know, I think the experience of doing a lot of Ironmans uh, kind of helped because obviously they're eight hours and this is only three hours. So I knew I could keep going for a long period of time. It was just whether or not my legs would uh, get too heavy and uh, I'd fade that way. Here we go, starting from mine, finishing uh, in our parents in Lower Stuff. Right, three, two, one. for the actual run I really wanted to do three hours when I was planning it and I like mapped it out on Strava and I found out that it was bang on 50k I was kind of like oh I wonder how long it would take and then I just put put into a calculator three hours you know and worked out the average pace and I was like 336k pace I think 336k pace could be doable I'm not 100% sure obviously as it's in training you know if it was in a race I would be pretty confident I could do that but as a training run it's always a lot harder you know I know from in the past when you've done like a hard 5k or 10k in training you never go anywhere near as quick as you do in a race so I was kind of like that will be tough but it could be doable um, and I like the sound of getting under a round number so um, yeah three hours was the target. How are you feeling? Feeling good. We're 45 seconds up through 10k, 35, 15 so it's going well. Yeah. <laughs> Halfway there, how are you feeling Joe? Yeah. I'm starting to feel it to be honest. So I've got 24.5 K's in in 126. Got a bit of time in the bank. But yeah, starting to feel it. I was always worried about if it would take me ages to recover because you hear stories of people doing a marathon that takes them like God, mums to recover and I was always a bit worried about that but then as I've got older and the amount of Ironmans I've done I thought screw it you know this winter's a good time to do it and it was a bucket list uh, thing that I'd wanted to do and I just said for you know about six weeks before I'm going to do it between Christmas and New Year is a bit of a challenge. How you feeling Joe? Uh, a little bit now like coming up 35k um, Got some time in the bank. Got a bit of a stitch, but just need to get to the marathon in under 230, and I'll be good. How far have we got to go for that? Seven to eight k, and on about 228 pace. It's going all right. Now I'm coming up to the marathon. We've got 50 meters left till I go for it. 42.2 k, 229 bang on for the marathon. 7.8 kilometers left and 31 minutes to do it. Go on, Jay. Just under 229, like basically like bang on 229. I'm over the moon to do it, like uh, it was really fun. 
It was uh, awesome to have the support of everyone. Uh, obviously, Harry coming up from Bristol to join me was great, and then Callum starting it with me, and then obviously Tyler and uh, Will that were filming some of the stuff, and then some of my friends that came out to support me on the way, and uh, obviously Techno Viking on the bike as well, handing out nutrition. Yeah, it was awesome, and uh, really pleased to uh, to have done it in under three hours. The wind like. Uh, what do you think of the wind? Like, it was mostly behind us, weren't it? <laughs> it was like mostly with us, but there were some bits where it was pretty nasty. Yeah. Like coming up here was a bit of a headwind, weren't it, at the end? Yeah, I'd imagine coming back through Alton Broads. That yeah, that hill. Uh, the worst bit was going through Loddon and then like the Haddish Go Flyover was a headwind. Oh, right. So like going all the way along that bit. But yeah, it's good. 50k, under three hours. So well tough for that, 333k pace. 50k. So you've raced lots of Ironman over the years, uh, you've done the 12 hour time trial and broken the British record uh, and now you've experienced an ultra run, what do you think is the most challenging? So challenging wise um, or difficult wise I think to be honest physically I would say the Ironman is the hardest out of the three from what from what I've done like that is just a grind and you get onto the marathon and 25-30 kilometres in it's horrific, um, you know, you're battling demons, you always go through bad patches in an Ironman um, and then a good patch might follow and then another bad patch, even when I've had some of my best races and it looks like you win them easily, you still go through the demons and have some horrible patches. Uh, the 12 hour time trial however, that was the most mentally challenging race I've, um, I've had just because you're out there for 12 hours, there's no let up, you need to hold the aero position for as long as you can and 12 hours is one hell of a time to be like pushing the pace for no matter what you're doing, swimming, biking or running, like that was just horrible. And there's no one to talk to in the 12 hour, you know, you're literally set off in minute intervals and that's it, you know, for 12 hours. This was like a bit of a grind. It was like, I think it was a lot easier than Ironman because I know how hard the Ironman can get after 30, 35K. So I was kind of prepared for it a bit in the 50k and you know the first two hours you don't feel that bad so it's only really the last hour where it just starts to grind you down a bit so I would say the Ironman is physically the hardest, the 12 hours the most mentally challenging and then this is the, the third one but it's still like fairly tough you know it's still three hours but like the other two are a bit harder. Thanks for the company Harry. <laughs> Callum didn't last too long did he? 6k and then that was it. <laughs> no it was good having the company it made it easier when uh, when I, it kind of helped break it up because I knew you were going to join in at the end, so I was just thinking, get there. It was close, yeah. I wasn't, I was close on to, but yeah. Oh, really? Right. I was like, can't do the walk. Get inside then, get a drink or something. Yeah, yeah, cheers, we get a beer, bro. Thanks for uh, coming, sure. mate. Really appreciate right. it. Thanks for driving as well. No, no. Driving, uh... the wheels, you, you're amazing, mate, honestly. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> you do it. Yeah, it's good, <laughs> wasn't it? Uh, yeah, thanks to Techno for the tune, <laughs> the drink. <laughs> He's like DJ, yeah, drunk yard dogs. <laughs> Would you do another ultra run? Is that possible? So, yeah, I wouldn't mind doing another ultra run. Um, Hocker do this thing, actually, where they've had Jim Walmsley in the past and. Uh, They've tried to set up like an ATK record and um, he's been their man for the job. You know, I think he's done four hours 50 for it and set some kind of record for 50 miles or ATK. But, you know, I'd love to have a crack at that. Like after seeing the pace that I held for the 50K and how I felt, I think I went through 30 miles in bang on 250 and uh, the 50K record or the 50 mile record was 450. So it would kind of be six minute mile and for the last 20 miles. And um, I'd like to have a crack at it, to be honest. Like if it ever fitted in with a triathlon season or if Hocker ever did a big event like that, again, and we're looking for people to have a crack, I would definitely be up for it. You know, I think if I was in a proper race uh, with pacemakers on a flat course and, uh, you know, you had the buzz about going for a record, I think I could, uh, be, I, I would uh, stand a good chance at it and I'd love the opportunity to do that. Um, you know, and to be honest, I, qu I quite like doing some of these longer runs, but it would all be if it if it fitted in with the Ironman, because obviously that's where my goal's at now. And, um with St George being the World Championships in May, I'm fully focused on that. But yeah, I'd love to do another one. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed following the 50K. It was a great experience for me. And uh, thanks for all your support. I've had loads of messages on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Strava, um, Tempo Skipper on Strava if you want to follow me, if you want to check the splits. So check it out. And uh, yeah, see you next time, guys. And uh, yeah, thanks for all the nice messages you've all sent me.